can't hear it, mate. It doesn't sound very good. Give us a little tune there, Michael. On what one? No, no, one no. Anyone that makes a noise. Yeah. <laughs> this is the... Very good. So, enough of that. After our last video around the Multistrada V4, you will remember that I was getting quite, uh, how should I say, upset, uh, annoyed, uh, distressed, very distressed, distressed about all this wonderful tech that was featuring on the new Multistrada that seemed to be as redundant as a, an ashtray. Um, and I thought there was a couple of comments in in that last video where someone said, "Well, actually, you can load." GPX files up to Psygeek, and I went, really? So I thought, I don't want to get my facts wrong twice. Yeah, I've already got one litre. Your, your specs were all over the place as well, weren't they? Yeah, so I thought, I'll tell you what, I'm going to do a load of research. And I found a few people at Psygeek and also at Bosch, and I started emailing them like a, like a yes. demented idiot. Um, and I began to learn a lot about what was actually going on. So this video, is a tech update and i'm very pleased to tell you i've got another powerpoint go. that's three powerpoints <laughs> rotate your ipad no i like it like this oh fuck's sake are you ready now can i start can i start my powerpoint presentation yeah. I'll Record, yeah. well. the, the v4 multistrada that frustrated me uh, a very quick recap, you have a, a, a bespoke app on your phone uh, and this connects your phone to your uh, screen and it should be able to give you sat nav, phone, music, everything. But I discovered to my dismay that only one navigation app was possible. You couldn't share Google Maps or any other forms of your favorite nav applications. And I thought this was really not, not on. Uh, made me quite angry, yeah, angry yeah, from Surrey. So I did a bit of research and what triggered it was Mick, and thank you for your comment, Mick, which said actually you can import GPX routes. So I then set about setting up a uh, Psygeek account to find out, well, what can you do? Uh, and effectively, um, the way this works is that actually the, the app um, and, and Ducati's all run by a third party, and Psygix, the navigation. And I, on my research, I saw that, oh, hang on a minute, Psygix now available for Android Auto, and they've got this web route planner available. So I thought, hang on a minute, maybe I've got my facts wrong. What's been going on here? And sure enough, when you create your account, if you want to pay 17 quid a year, 18 quid a year, this is the functionality you have. On, on their website. So I started to do some work. I put in a route. Uh, you can select by postcode. Um, you can put in multiple waypoints, but unlike Google Maps, where you might want to drag that route somewhere else, you can't. It's effectively like any car sat nav. It'll give you a choice of routes and you just pick one. So not really ideal. You can't edit the waypoints. And if you put in lots of waypoints like this, I thought I'll put in a load of waypoints and see what happens. It tells you there's no routes available for that. Yeah. <laughs> and it gives you a straight line. <laughs> from, well, <laughs> you wouldn't want to go to Gala Shields anyway, would you? But you wouldn't really want to go to Gala Shields. So I'm, I'm still not convinced by Psygeek, but I have been talking to their CEO actually, uh, and trying to encourage them that just because of what their product might work for the automotive market, doesn't mean to say it works for bikers. So I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging them to think yeah. about us. Which brought me on to uh, thinking about routes, the Bosch product roadmap. What was it? Because Bosch seemed to be everywhere. And when you look at their website, their mobility, you know, they're really all about, their vision is for accident-free riding. And they claim all these wonderful statistics about how they've saved lives quite possibly through ABS, airbags, all the rest of it. They're on this big mission. But the more you look, the more you realize that Bosch are really on the charge. Um, and if we look at our typical motorcycle, um, most of it is now Bosch. So, you know, it started back in 2007 with fuel injection and a ABS, which were driven by legislation. And since then, they've added 
traction control, anti-wheelie. They brought out the IMU, which has brought in lots of functionality for things like semi-active suspension and radar and cruise. I wouldn't be surprised that when Ducati or BMW or KTM make a motorcycle, all of this componentry, including the loom, comes from Bosch. All that oh, the they just put the bike bits of the hardware around it then. Yeah, effectively. Yeah. So they are everything from spark plugs through to light bulbs uh, on, on, on a motorcycle. You know, it's quite, and obviously radar with cruise is the latest bit product that Bosch have added to this whole ecosystem of products. And actually there's no other manufacturer that could ever compete with them. You know, you might have Saks or you might have Olin's hardware in your shocks, but it's the Bosch control system. And of course, they have this screen, the one that gets stolen, Mike, is yeah. their control unit for all of that hardware. And therefore, the mobile phone connectivity to this screen, which is known as MySpin, and you can Google MySpin, they now hold that piece as, as well. So that when you see the Ducati app, it's not Ducati's app, it's the MySpin app. Oh, so they just branded that app. Rebranded. Oh. So the, they're, all, they're all the same. So this is why Ducati don't really have any control over the functionality. It's all down to Bosch. But all of Bosch, and if Bosch have done a lot of R&D and I got the market research for MySpin, um, it's all based really about cars because this is finding its way into Ford, uh, Jaguar Land Rover. Um, this technology is not just for motorcycles. Um, and, you know, therefore, just to sort of summarise, effectively, Bosch own all of, all of this piece. And then they've got a series of third-party app developers, this whole ecosystem. So really, this is a bit like, instead of buying a motorcycle at the front there, you're actually buying what was uh, an iPod. It's no different to what Apple have done. They've built the uh, hardware and then effectively they're going to sell access to all these, these web developers yeah. to gain access through to your motorcycle or your car, be that you know, restaurant guides or whatever. So they're being very, very clever here. And basically all of this is new. And, and therefore so far, Psygic is the only navigation app. But you can see we've got Cardo on here, we've got Senna, and other apps will come through in time. So all of that frustration I had was really because it's a very immature market. Yeah. What do BMW do? If this, if this is all Bosch and this is Ducati we're talking about here, right. what about BMW? So the Ducati system, I'm sorry, the BMW system is exactly the same. You'll have limited navigation capability on your so you but But... But BMW have got this strong partnership with Garmin and they'll still have a separate, uh, at the moment, a separate nav system controlled by their whirly wheel. Right. I, I've I no doubt our viewers will challenge us on this. Um, I've got the, the latest nav six, which I think Rick's got as well. Yeah. Um, but as I understand it, that's been well, it's been out for some time. There's not going to be a nav seven because it's all integrated with the right. new screen, right? Well, has yours got the new as yours? Yeah, they all, they all come on a new screen now, Mick. Yeah, yeah, that's probably why the psychic thing will have will, will have a Garmin app in it. Then. They'll have the Garmin stuff, they'll, with they'll add Garmin in here or all the other apps eventually. But so the, the word of warning is it all sounds great in the showroom, but you're going to have to check whether your favorite navigation app is yet is now available on the app store, effectively, uh, the Bosch app store as opposed to the Apple one. Yeah. Um, but where this is going is far more sinister, interesting. You know, effectively, they talk about a whole ecosystem here. And they, the MySpin application is going to find its way into cars, not just motorbikes. And, you, you know, there's a lot of data here and, and effectively a lot of data being held in the cloud. And where that goes is in terms of, you know, things like uh, the amount of real-time data that is going to be able to come through to your screen. Not just what the speed limit is, but there's, there's an accident up the road. 
uh, or something like that. So they've got dynamic data right the way through. We're in a declining industry where you know the average age of motorcyclists is you know they're, they're bald, grey-haired, um, and there's very few new people come to motorcycling because it's perceived as very dangerous in today's you know mollycoddled uh, cotton wool society. So what they're showing is the end of Smidsey, where this system that effectively, all, you know, the architecture is building, uh, and there's a video that you can watch here, and, and Andy might interspace some, where this driver is getting a warning come up on his screen saying there's a motorcycle around the corner, beware. If and they this, don't see out their massive windscreen, how are they going to see that little screen there? You know, they'll be on paying the, attention they'll, anyway. They'll be on the head-up <laughs> play, Tobers. <clears throat> Everything is on head up now. I mean, you just wide, them over wide, there wide, everything, everything comes up and things vibrate and all sorts of things yeah, on the white Mazda. Mm. So that will come up on, on a head up display. And audio as well. So this is all known as bike to vehicle. Right. And they've got vehicle to uh, X, vehicle to vehicle. So this is, this is, is another... An interesting, it's an interesting thing here from a legal perspective, is, which is probably more mine and Mike's department, <clears throat> is that if you've got all this technology and then that's come up on somebody's car and then they've still hit them, <laughs> that's a purpose. That's a, that's, a, that's a deliberate act then. <laughs> this is, the, this is uh, aut you know, autonomous driving plus one. So all of the Google cars use cameras and sensors and stuff yeah. like that, but they're not connected to other vehicles and talking to one another. They're not reporting, uh, I'm broken down on a bend, beware well, of me. Yeah. Um, and, and this is the layer of intelligence that Bosch are bringing. I have to say though, that um, I enjoy my Navigator 6, my 5 and whatever, and all the bikes I've had have had this thing. But recently, um, since you've got this quad lock thing, Tobas, I also have my phone up as the, you with Google Maps at the same time. Yeah. And it's interesting because some of the stuff that Google Maps picks up, which the Navigator doesn't. So it's got quite a bit sad, I suppose, but there's actually two sort of sat-navs. Well, I was looking at this thing after the, the discussion about the Ducati. I was looking at this thing, um, which is this um, like a Bluetooth. There's two of them. Uh, this company, Carpe, in Portuguese, I think. Um, they do these two little Bluetooth controllers with buttons on. There's, um, there's this one, which has two buttons and a little joystick on it. And there's this one, which has got two sets oh, yeah. of four buttons. Um, and they link up to an Android phone or Android tablet and let you run whatever you want, right? So if you want Google Maps or Waze or Garmin or whatever, yeah. whatever app you've got on your phone, plus you've got Spotify, plus you've got all of the other things on your phone. Mm -hmm. um, so they've got all of that and they've also got, um, they, they sell this kind of ruggedized pad thing. Here we go, um, which is an Android um, waterproof, shockproof thing. And it'll give you all your directions and your speed and everything else. Um, so it'll make a, a really quite a nice dash on I was going to say, that's the dogs. Yeah. So they, if they, you were like me with like an analog bike with, with just a, a little LCD display and no TFT stuff or radar or anything else, or like the vast majority of other people, you could get one of these Wii controller things yeah. and just stick your phone on a quad lock, which I do all the time. And, um, and you're up and running with whatever flexibility you want. Which one, which one were you looking at? Um, I've actually ordered this one here. They're on back order, unfortunately, but, um, because you always get the basic version of everything, don't yeah, you? Well, I, I like the fact it's got a little joystick on there. So the bottom one is for serious off-road and rally. Well, you don't fucking do that. So you buy the first one, don't you? No, exactly. exactly right. This, this bottom one here, it takes a feed in from, um, you can put a little magnet on the wheel that will give you a proper distance reading. Um, and it lets you sort of scroll up and down a PDF road book and that kind of stuff. So it's a bit more serious. And also it takes a, a bit more... Um, space on the bars because it's a bit wider as well. It's like a road book. It's an electronic road book. I think one of the images you showed was a road book. Yeah, um, exactly. Which is what you use you'll, you'll need one of those then, Andy, to get your GS to the nearest Starbucks because that's where mine always heads. They've got Psychic on there as well, look. 
Well, the thing <clears> is here, you can put Psygig or any other app on it. Yeah. And you, they've got an app which gives you all of your, like a head up display, all your speed and everything else and the weather if you want, and you can run your apps off it at the same time. <laughs> I think it looks like Bosch is certainly going for it, but I can't see how they could compete with Google in terms of number of people using the thing, you know, because people want Apple CarPlay or Google. The, the issue with the Bosch's screen, right, is that it's not a touch screen. So all of these apps that you've got on your phone are designed to work with a touch screen, whereas on the Ducati and motorcycles, you've got the control yeah. widget. Yeah, yeah. And that's when they fall down. So what they said to me is these apps actually have to, to work properly. They have to be modified. Yeah. So to get into the Bosch app store, they have to actually be tweaked slightly to be, yeah. be switch, switchable. switchable by the, by um, the hardware. At least, you know, with your uh, Garmin, you can you have the control wheel if you do go for the BMW. Yeah. yeah. That Carpe yeah. controller, what it does is um, it adapts to what app you're, you've got running yeah so the controls are consistent so if you're using mapping if you've got google maps and a garmin map thing or ways the same buttons on the controller will do the same things whichever app you're running which i think is really clever as well yeah yeah. we'll have to see how you get on with it we'll do a test on that i'll report back so interesting very good detail look through the um motorbike tech world andy that was yeah good 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 um good research there mr b Bit yeah. ironical that our last video was "Is there too much tech on bikes?" So you have you still got the R eighty? <laughs> the R eighty? No, I sold the R eighty. Oh, do you? But, well, why did well, did you want to buy it? No. <laughs> uh, HP two would be worth a bit now, wouldn't it? Actually. Oh fuck me! Yeah, don't even go there. No. <laughs> so, I think the bottom line is bike technology is coming, whether we like it or not. But the good news is that when it gets there, it should reduce uh, our, uh, our likelihood to come a cropper. Um, no more Smidsy, they say. And if that means more people join, become motorcyclists because they believe it's safer, if that means our industry grows, so much the better. So we'll update you with more when our new toys arrive, Andy. Yeah, perfect, excellent, all right. Thanks very much for watching as usual. If you made it through this one, you deserve a Jack Daniels and Coke as well.